Um, I just felt like I was in a good rhythm. Um, my body felt good. I was able to push the pace, uh, you know, and get some easy stuff. So yeah, I felt I felt I felt pretty good. One hundred percent. He didn't have it tonight at all. Three for nineteen, one for eleven. Um, still finishes with eighteen points. Uh, you know, which means he obviously got to the free throw line and got fouled. But uh, I, I thought the way he kept himself in the game by getting other guys involved. You know, like that, that, that's growth. You know, when you look at um, where he's where he's come from, the steps that he's taken, he's been thrown into a position that not many guys will handle well. And that's essentially to, um, <clears throat> with all due respect, to do your best Steph Curry imitation. And, I mean, now, doing your best Steph Curry imitation is incredible. But uh, still, like, you know, Jordan's continued to grow, and, and he's kind of been thrown into that role. And most guys wouldn't handle that well and would fail miserably. And I thought tonight, um, like I said, having a poor shooter night, stuck with it, didn't have it, didn't have any energy. And he helped us close the game down the stretch. And, and, and I think that's the sign. You know, I said in my interview, he, he's one of them guys. And, you know, that's the sign. Like, no matter what, you're finding a way. So I think that definitely helps add to this case. And like I said, again, um, <clears throat> you know, all these awards seem like they, you know, when there is no criteria and it's just personal opinion, the award is called the most improved, not um, you know, not who had the best year. That's that's the MVP award, actually. And I think you know a lot of times, uh, you know, we you know we get it confused when, when talking the most improved award of, oh, who in that group is having the best year, you know. But you know, no disrespect to John Morant, but John Morant's an MVP candidate. John Morant isn't the most improved player candidate. John Morant was fucking incredible last year, like, um, <clears throat> you know, and so. And when you look around, the most improvement has been Jordan Poole. And I think that that goes without saying. I mean, you can look, again, you go across the list and you you show me what those guys did last year and the year before that. And you show me what Jordan did last year and the year before that. He is the most improved. And so if we're going by what the what the title of the award is, what what the you know the name of the award is, then it's easily Jordan. But if we're making up these, um, if we're making up these ideas, and you know what what makes a guy, or you know these uh, just going straight off these personal opinions on who we think has the best year, then it probably won't be him. But you know, so let's let's go by what the award is named, and not by who's having a better year out of the group who people think should win the award. <laughs> One hundred percent. I love the fact that he was three for nineteen and one for eleven, and not um, three for eleven or three for twelve and one for six. You know, he stayed aggressive, and because of that, due to that, you know, you still have to react. You, you know, you're not just giving him shots. You give him shots, all it takes is one. And so, you know, they were still all over him, and he got to the hole when we needed it most. When they were making their run, I think he probably got um, four key free throws down the stretch. Now, obviously, they fouled late. But he had four key free throws down the stretch where they were making their run and, and to stop the bleed. And like I said, that is that's what the greats do. You know, that's what uh, these guys who's been doing that all these years, scoring at that level all these years. That's what they do. Get to the free throw line. And, you know, that was a huge step for him. It was beautiful to see. Well, I'm not going to take away from the work that he put in because he's one of the hardest working guys I've seen. Um, and I've said that over and over again since he was a rookie. Uh, so I'm not going to take away the work he put in, but I've always thought his his playmaking uh, was an underutilized skill. Um, and, you know, this year he's been able to do more of that. But I've always thought, you know, you can put him in the pick and roll uh, and, and he can really make plays. He, you know, early on it was like, oh, man, we want him to be a spot-up shooter. And he's not that. Can he make shots? Of course. But he's not a spot-up shooter. He's a player. And he's got an opportunity to do that, and I think he's taking advantage of it. But 
uh, you know, I've known since he got here, he showed quickly that he that he knew how to pass the ball. And, you know, now that he has the ball in his hands more, it's showing more and more. How do you think it got to Cooper? Because when, when he was starting in terms of play, he was doing a lot more ball shooting, right? Now it's starting to take the step. He is doing a lot more ball handling. When Steph comes back and he goes to that second unit again, how do you think him having more reps being that primary ball handler is going to impact the second unit? Uh, well, I'm not sure he goes back to the second unit. I, you know, I think that's that's still to be decided, and that's not an easy decision to make. Um, you know, so I'm not going to uh, sit up here and coach Kerr if that ain't my decision uh, whether he's going where he goes back to the second unit or not. But um, <clears throat> Coach Kerr is a very smart coach, a uh, very smart man, and. Just because Steph comes back doesn't mean you totally take the ball out of Jordan's hands. He's done well. You know, what, what, you, what you've what you learned is you have another weapon to get Steph off the ball and allow Jordan to make some plays as well. Now, Steph is going to have the ball the majority of the time. We all know that, and we all want that, you know. But to know that you got another guy that you can get off the ball or that you can run sets for that can go get you a bucket any time, that's a powerful tool. So, um, I don't envision it as him just going back to the role that he was playing. I envision it that that's another, that's an added layer to our offense that we didn't have before. How do you feel? How do you think your team is right now with one regular season being last year with Sherman, you know, defeating, heading into the playoffs? Where do you think you guys are at right now? I think we're in a decent space. Um, we've won four in a row, which is great. Uh, looking to make that five tomorrow going into the playoffs. Uh, we're in a, we're we're figuring it out, but we're not there yet. Like we still got room to grow, and that's exciting. Uh, you know, when when you're going into the playoffs, uh, we know how to win games, and that's you know so. And understanding that we know how to win games, but yet we still have a ways to go and un- a lot of untapped potential. That's exciting because most teams at this point in the year, they you know you, you know exactly what they are, what you're getting, and that's just that uh, they're going to either win or lose. For us, we know what we have, we know who we are. But we also know we got a lot of room to grow and guys that can can even take more jumps. And I think that's that's a great position to be in. I thought he's I think it's been incredible. I think Kenny, um, who works with him, has done an incredible job. Uh, you know, Jam, who runs the entire player development, has done an amazing job. Um <clears throat> To say I, he's right where I thought he would be, I don't. I don't really know where where that is or, or what what I thought that would be. What I will say is I I think his growth has been incredible. He's shooting the ball really well, uh, which early on, early on I thought he came into the season wanting to prove to everybody that he can shoot. And I told him then, don't don't go out there thinking I need to prove to people I can shoot because then what you end up doing is you go out there you take bad ones because you want to prove so bad to everybody that you can shoot. Um, once he settled in and now he takes good ones, you see that he can shoot, you know, and um, and the way he puts pressure on the rim, uh, you can't teach that. He's getting to the front of that rim. And, you know, with his athleticism, I think he's uh, <clears throat> I think he's in a pretty good place. You know, obviously a lot of room to grow, uh, which is exciting, but. Overall, I think he's in a really good space, and he continues to grow. And that's, you know, that's that's all you can ask for from a rookie. And you brought up 19, and there were some fouls that looked like you could tell he was looking at that back. Um, do you feel like he's ready to for the big stage of the postseason? That he's really ready to go. I think he is ready. Um, I think that's I think that's what he's shown us is that. You know, at the end of the day, it's still basketball, and he can step on the floor and, and stand next to anybody. Um, and and that's a great thing to have. As far as the fouls, I think he does um, get a couple fouls that, you know, you want to take back. But in saying that, I think he also gets a tough whistle, as rookies do, though. That's kind of a part of it. We all have been through it. Um, you know, and so he's no different than anyone else. I think he does get a tough whistle at time, but I think that is part of the lumps that you have to take coming into this league. As much as I would love to go to the ref and say, that's a tough one on him, but then he don't get it on the other end. And, you know, I'll go talk for him a little bit, but at the end of the day, I understand. Like, you're a rookie. You got to you gotta take your lumps. You got to earn those calls. And, you know, no referee will admit that. <laughs> no, Nobody will really admit, but that is the reality. I think 
you know, coming in this week, coming in this league, we all have been through it. Where you may get a call or two called on you that maybe another guy wouldn't. But respect is built, and you know he's in that space where you know he's a rookie. You gotta you gotta earn that respect. You gotta earn being able to put that hand on the guy. You gotta earn to be able to get away with a push. That's just how it goes, and that's in any business. That's just not the NBA. The NBA is on display because we're in front of millions of people every night. But any business uh, that you go into, you gotta earn that respect. You gotta earn the right to do more, and 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 that's kind of where he is. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, he'll he'll continue to get better at that. But what he's bringing to the court is extremely valuable to this team. I thought he's handled it well. I think for the most part, with the exception of one or two games this year, um, where he kind of let it get to him. Uh, but for the most part, he's handled it well. And as a rookie, that's what you have to do. I don't care if you're the seventh pick or the seventieth. There is no seven, but you give up a drift. Um, <clears throat> You got to earn what you want. And just because you have a good quarter don't mean you're going back in the game. You may have just been called on for that quarter. I'll never forget um, Coach Jackson telling me as a rookie, like, hey, man, you may not play tomorrow. This is the day before the opening game. You may not play uh, tomorrow. But this league has a funny way of working itself out, and your number will always be called and make sure you're ready for your opportunity. And that goes for every rookie. Um your number may be called, it may not. You know why? Because you still have a lot of respect to earn. You have to earn the right to for those minutes to be yours. You don't just get them just because you play well. It's a lot more that goes into that. And I think he understands that. Um, <clears throat> and he's doing a great job in handling that. As is Moses, as is Juan, as is Damian Lee, as is Belly, uh, Kavon Looney. Uh, some games he played 27 minutes, some games he played 12. Uh, I, but you have to earn the right for those minutes to be yours. And, and all you can do is take advantage of your minutes when you're out there, and he's doing that. So one on Bonnie, did you have one or not? I'm good. <laughs> Thanks, Braymont. <laughs> one for Maria. Maria, go ahead. One question on Zoom. Hi, Draymond. Hope you're well. And hope you can see me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, hope you're okay. Um, Steve said earlier today that you were the best. So I was wondering, first of all, how do you feel about that, that he was praising you tonight? And then on the other hand, given the experience that you have in this team, what do you think about the way in which the team is performing recently? What are those things that will help you succeed in the playoffs? Um, I mean, it always feels great to get praise. You, know, you get in this business, you you get a, you catch a lot of flat. Uh, some go wrong, and you don't hear the end of it until you fix it. So, uh, I don't take that for granted. I'm very appreciative of that. As far as this team goes, um, I think we're doing some good things, and I think we're doing some things that we can continue to improve upon, and we will. Um, but overall, I think we're in a pretty good space. You know, we. Had a great stretch of the season and kind of lost it and got it back and lost it. And now I think we've gotten it back at right at the right time. So I think we're in a really good place, ready to roll, excited for the playoffs to start. Um, but we got one more game to take care of tomorrow. And, you know, not sure what they'll do with their lineup, but that really don't matter. We got to go out there and win the game. And I think we're excited and ready to do that. Thank you.